former president Donald Trump. Mr. President, welcome back. Good to have you. Good morning. The CPI number just came out at 0.3 percent. That means 3.6 year over year. It's still too high. What's your reaction to that number, Mr. President? Well, it's way too high. But if you go back two years, you see, that was where it was just so bad and nothing's happening. You know, you're still way up in the stratosphere, close to 30 percent, the real numbers. Remember, they leave a lot of numbers out. You know, this crazy Biden administration, everything's a everything's a game and they leave a lot of numbers out. They leave the highest numbers, the worst numbers. Oftentimes they'll leave rental out. They'll leave uh, a certain food type out. The whole thing is rigged. They are the worst. They are you this cannot. Is the worst president. Hey, you, this is, and you don't have to say it, I will. This is the worst president in the history of the United States, and it's not even close. And you can take the 10 worst and add them up, and they're not as bad as this guy. And And look, the inflation's bad, and the number today is bad. They want to try for the, you know, this is like using the strategic reserves for gasoline. They want to try and play around with the interest rates with the Federal Reserve, but you can't lower them because of the fact that you have the inflation. It's a lot of inflation when added to the inflation that we've suffered that's been so bad. It's got to come down much more. That's a lot of inflation, their number. This, this Combined morning, with blue state announced. taxes, it's it's an incredible burden. People are fleeing California, for example. Hey, quick question. LeBron James can leave California, go back to Ohio if he wants. Given the taxes and the inflation in California, should he do that, Mr. President? Well, I'm not a fan of LeBron James. I have... Uh, a lot of players that I like better than LeBron, although he's an excellent basketball player, but I don't like his politics one bit. Uh, this nation would be destroyed if you went by his politics. You remember he endorsed uh, the great Hillary Clinton, and that endorsement was a disaster. She got on stage, she walked up to him, and she came up to his belt buckle. I said, that's not a good look. That is not a good look for our president. But, but uh, shouldn't he flee uh, California so taxes I like is I did, like everyone else leaving? did? You, is he thinking about leaving California? Going back oh, yeah, to he, he, was, he showed up at Cavaliers Rocket Mortgage uh, on uh, two nights ago for the Cavs' uh, fourth game. So there's some speculation he might come back to Ohio. Well, Dan Gilbert's a good guy, and he's a smart owner, and that'll be interesting. Certainly it's good to have LeBron James as a player. Yeah. Now, let me talk to you about the debate challenge. Uh, President Biden just issued you a debate challenge for June and September with the Veeps talking in July. Do you accept? Oh, absolutely. I've been trying to get, you know, he's issuing it. I wonder whether or not he shows up because, you know, he also challenged me to golf. So I'm a very good golfer. He can't hit a ball 50 yards. He said, I'll give him three aside. But he knows he'll never play. This is sort of like that, I think. But I hope not, because I really think he has to debate. He might as well get it over with. Probably no. should do it early so that he can, you know, he's not going to get any better. No, that's, but day, June and September is great. Every day is a down factor for him. Uh, June and September would be great if you can agree on the size of the table and the moderators. Well, already, and I guess... I just, why don't you look at the statement? I just put out a statement. You should have it on your hot wires. You get everything. I notice you get things very quickly. I put it out on truth, and truth is the hottest thing right now by far. I will go look that up. Let and me move on. If, take a look. If you, President you Biden... That, uh, do you want to read it? Do you want to yes, read I it? Yes, I do. If I, if, I'll look and see if Jason sent it to me on the back yep. wire here. Um, oh, I see. Okay. I'll, lo I'll look for a second. Uh, do you think yeah. if his infirmity increases, they will dump him, Mr. President, at the at the convention, replace him with Kamala or Gavin or someone like that? I do. I do. I, do. And I don't think they'll have a choice. Will it be Gavin? Will it be Kamala or somebody else? I don't know. I mean, Gavin's a terrible governor. Gavin Newsom. Uh, he's a terrible governor. I think he does a terrible job. I have things out in California and. You know, it's so beautiful, everything. The weather is the best. Everything is so good, but he just does a terrible job. You know, water, I had a deal for water to come down from the north. They have so much water, and they don't do it because they're trying to protect a tiny, tiny little fish that hasn't made it. And millions and millions of gallons of water are sent into the Pacific Ocean, routed right into the Pacific instead of coming down throughout California. It's so. All right, I've got, I've got your statement. I'm ready to go. The dates that are proposed are fine. Anywhere, anytime, any place. Let's see if Joe can make it to the stand-up podium. I think they ought to go at least two hours. Do you think the president can stand up for two hours? I think we should go two hours, yeah. I think we should go two
Okay, and let me turn to Israel. Is important. He wants to sit down. You know, he wants to do things like he wants to sit down. I think a, a debate should be standing up. Don't you agree with that? Well, I've done them both ways. The best debate in modern history was Lieberman and Cheney when they were sitting down. But that was a good moderator, and it went a long time. I don't think you're going to find a good moderator very easily. I really don't. Didn't I think you think you should my have debates liberal... with Hillary were better? Didn't you think my debates yes, with I did. Hillary were really better? Yes, I did. And I, 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 I don't want Chris Lieberman. Wallace. I don't want Candy Crowley. I want someone who's fair, Mr. President. I just don't. But let, don't let me ask you this. I'd like that, too. But I, I'd be willing to take anybody. You know, what difference does it make? I'd be willing to take anybody. But, you know, the commission got caught cheating with me. You know that. Yes. They turned down my sound, remember? And they also canceled a debate without talking to you. I, I, they're so bad. They should have been exiled years ago. Now they're out of it. Let's talk about Israel, Mr. President. Last time you were on this show, a couple of months ago, you said they've got to finish the job. They need a victory. At that massive rally on Saturday, you said the same thing. Victory, victory, victory. What do you make of President Biden's arms embargo on offensive weapons declared last week? It is not believable to me that he made the statement. All that does is prolong a war because it and it, and it gives the other side tremendous energy when that happens. You know, it gives them a psychological energy. That was such a bad statement. And how a person that's Jewish can vote for this guy who's obviously mentally impaired, how a Jewish person can vote for him is beyond belief. I have friends, they're Democrats. You know, they're good people, they're Jewish, and they're Democrats. And that's just fine being a Democrat. But I say, how do you vote for this guy? And many of them say we won't. But some say we will. It's almost like they're in a rut. They can't get out of the rut. But he is so bad for Israel. And I've been the best president with Golan Heights and moving the uh, capital, Jerusalem, uh, getting the embassy built. You know, we, we not only did I give the embassy, I got it built. And you bankrupted Iran or nearly bankrupted Iran. President Biden has refunded Iran. Will you put yeah. snapback sanctions in place if you're elected? When I was president, Iran was broke. They were broke. Stone cold broke. And you did a story I remember once, but everybody was. There was no money for terror. Hamas, Hezbollah had no terror because they had no money. They had no cash. And Iran was broke. They had less than a billion dollars. They were at $600 million. They wanted to make a deal with me. And then the election was rigged. And we had a different uh, little little problem came up with the COVID and with all of the different things that took place in that horrible election. That election was the worst election in the history of our country. We're going to have the best election in the history of our country. On And, and it's it's going to be a beauty, November 5th. You know, the one thing, you, you can't really say November 5th anymore. In the old days, you could have a date. But here you have all these early dates, September 22nd, uh, September 29th. You have dates all over the place. We used to have Election Day. Now we have Election Period, unfortunately. It was so much now, better the other way, but what are you going to do? President Biden seems to me here. to be afraid of everything, afraid of China, afraid of Russia, afraid of Iran. I don't think you were afraid of anything. Do you think he's afraid of, of like Xi and Putin? Because this is the most tremulous administration I remember. And I remember Jimmy Carter. So I think, well, he's far worse than Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is like a brilliant president. If you compare him to Biden, Jimmy Carter never let 18 million people into our country, many from jails and prisons and insane asylums. OK, he never let. He never had anything like this. Jimmy Carter is a happy man now because his presidency was considered brilliant by comparison to this guy. This guy is the worst. No, he's afraid because of a different reason. He's a thief, a total thief, and he's taken millions and millions of dollars from China and Russia. Remember when he got three and a half million dollars from the mayor of uh, Moscow's wife? And I brought it up with Chris Wallace and Chris Wallace said, you can't bring that up. That doesn't belong here. I said, it's a big story. And two months later, it turned out to be a big story. He didn't want me to question him. I said, how come you got three and a half million dollars from the mayor of Moscow's wife? Remember that? It was a big deal. And Chris Wallace, how's he doing, by the way? Chris Wallace wouldn't let me bring it up. And I said, well, I'm debating two people then. Which is you, you were. Way, That's why I'm afraid case. about moderators. But, Mr. President, do you think Joe Biden is afraid of Xi Jinping? And do you think Xi is like a Mao or a Napoleon or a Caesar? Is he on the march everywhere? Yeah, well, the answer is yes. And yes, he's definitely afraid. But he's also afraid because 
Joe, Joe Biden is a Manchurian candidate in the truest sense of the word. He is being paid off by China and he's being paid off by Russia and he's being paid off and was paid off by Ukraine. You take a look at that. Just look at it. I mean, the money is coming from every different angle. So he's worried that if he uh, is nice, is, is tough, like I was with China, I took in $500 billion in tariffs, not one president and it was going up not one president has ever taken in anything from china now he puts a tariff finally it should have taken place three and a half years ago he puts it on the electric vehicle but that's going to destroy other vehicles you got to put it on everything he just put a tariff on china the first time he's ever done this he and the only reason he did it is because the election's coming up and he wants to sell this ridiculous ev mandate the all electric car that people don't want Five percent want it and certain people want it. And, you know, it doesn't go far. It costs too much and they're all going to be made in China. But he's he really is. He's a Manchurian candidate. And I believe he's weak on China because they know how much money they have paid him and his family. Now, Mr. President, I'm going to take a break here and send some folks away and keep other folks. But I, I, I switch out stations, as you know, at this point, we leave some and I want to give them that signal. I got to ask you about the Washington Post story last week that said the Biden administration is holding back intelligence on where Sinwar is on the tunnels. He's surrounded by hostages, probably American hostages. You brought back like 60 hostages with Ambassador O'Brien. What do you think of our holding back intel from the Israelis on where Sinwar and the hostages must be? It's, it's not even believable, and it's not believable that they're trying to get— Look, we don't want Austin and these guys telling our ally, and a very important ally, by the way— uh, how to fight their war. They've got to get that war over with, and they've got, to, they've got to do it very fast. You know, people are now starting to say October 7th didn't exist. You know, here goes the, uh, the, the misinformation machine. Uh, they're saying the war that never took place, October 7th never took place. It's the same way the same people that say the Holocaust never took place.